It's Friday, March the 23rd, and this is your Barbados Today afternoon news update. Thanks for joining us. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Shape up or ship out. Superintendent of Prisons John Nurse has cautioned his officers they could be fired if their work is not up to scratch. Nurse put them on notice this morning while addressing a ceremony at the Dawes Prison where 148 officers received their letters of appointment and 13 others were promoted. I also caution you that your job performance is also critical. Instances of excessive sick leave and absenteeism, failure to successfully complete your annual efficiency training and testing, instances of indiscipline and your general attitude, deportment and performance all matter in your general suitability for onward progression in the service and may even affect your continued attachment to the prison service. I therefore urge everyone to continue to demonstrate your commitment to excellence in all you do. Superintendent Nurse also praised those appointed for their discipline and patience in waiting for their moment to come, some as long as 10 years. At the prison service, we recognize that staff have expectations. Many of those expectations include appointments, promotions, pay, a decent workplace, safety, respect, and the list goes on. But where do these expectations come from? When you enter the workplace, were these the main driving forces that brought you in the first place, or was it something else? Did it have more to do with having a profession? a career, a calling, a dignified way of contributing to national development? If so, then one expects that all the other attributes and gains would naturally follow. What is required, however, is patience and professionalism. Many of you display these admirable qualities and therefore, deserve the benefits which should derive from employment at the prison service. In other news now, the National Union of Public Workers is alive and well, and that's the assurance from President Akani McDowell, who told members attending the NUPW's 74th annual general meeting that the 10,000-strong union is growing. The NUPW was rocked in 2013 after government laid off some 3,000 public workers. However, McDowell says under his leadership, there has been renewed confidence in the union and it's moving forward and expanding. I am pleased to report, however, that despite these challenges aforementioned and the negative impact resulting from the layoffs and retirees, that membership once again in the NUPW is on the increase. For example, the union has attracted approximately 1,000 workers between 2015 and 17. And I want to take this opportunity to thank the executive and staff for the contributions that they would have made in order for us to achieve this particular goal. This indicator should not encourage us to continue, should encourage us to continue reaching out to membership and to remain robust in our representation and not to be distracted by the incoherent noises of those who have no respect for labor, other than as a means to an end, and are willing to sacrifice principle on the altar of expediency. A call for Barbadians to be more proactive rather than reactive in their response to natural disasters is coming from the St. Lucie MP, Dennis Kelman. He was speaking this morning as the Department of Emergency Management unveiled the Sherman's Tsunami Community Smart Sign at Sherman's St. Lucie. The event was part of activities to mark the Sherman's Tsunami Day as part of celebrations marking Earthquake and Tsunami Smart Month. We have to recognize that we are in flat land where the sea meets the normal land, unlike to the eastern side and the northern side of Barbados, where it's very hilly. This particular area is not, and we must stay in its tsunami tracks as serious, even though we do not have any practical experiences 
we cannot wait until we have a practical experience to react. We must always be proactive and we must also always be appreciative of the work of the DM. And this morning, I want to congratulate the DM and all those who came together to ensure that the awareness is in place. And I would like to consider that this event is only the beginning, even though you might have had some other events to ensure that we educate the public about it. As the National Council on Substance Abuse is urging drivers to be more aware of what they ingest before they get behind the wheel. Today, personnel from the council are on the road educating drivers in light of recent changes to the Road Traffic Act, including breathalyzer testing. Acting Deputy Manager of the Council, Wendy Greenwich, says drivers must ensure that nothing impairs their ability to be fully alert. There have been some recent changes to the legislation regarding um, the breathalyzer and we want to make people aware of what they may be taking in their system which can have an impact on their ability to drive safely. So in recognition of that we decided let's try this here, it's something different for us where we are actually spending a whole day up here and interacting with people and getting them to be just a little bit more aware of what they're using. So we're not only focusing on alcohol, we're also looking at prescription medications which they may be taking and anything that can cause them to be distracted on the roads. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'm Professor Andrew Rose, the Central Bank of Barbados' 2018 Distinguished Visiting Fellow, and I'm delighted to be absorbing your beautiful island. Over the next few days, I'll meet and chat with different groups, and on Tuesday, March 27th, from 8.30 p.m., I invite you to converse with me and Julian Rogers on the topic, Looking Forward, How Can Caribbean Nations Respond to Global Developments, of which there are many. The conversation takes place live on CBC TV8, VOB 92.9, CBC 94.7, CMC member stations across the Caribbean and on www.centralbank.org.bb and Facebook. It's an occasion that you should not miss. Tune in. Welcome back with news from the region now. The murder of a 27-year-old woman has shaken up Trinidad and Tobago. Anita Bahadur was murdered by her common-law husband, who reportedly threatened to kill her repeatedly. Now her family is blaming authorities. Otto Carrington of CNC3 Television has the story. Anita Bahadur is the 14th woman to be killed for the year, but relatives believe she could have been alive today if the authorities did their job. The 27-year-old woman was stabbed to death by her ex-boyfriend in San Juan yesterday in the full view of onlookers. Anita's sister, Kavita Bahadur Rollins, told CNC3 that her sister's life was threatened weeks before the brutal attack. She was also threatened on a job on several occasions. And according to her sister, threats came from behind the prison walls while the suspect was serving time for domestic abuse. She says reports were made to the prison and the police service. I made reports to the Tunapuna police station about uh, two weeks and about a month ago I called the prison office, the prison service, sorry, and I asked to speak to the sergeant or the supervisor in charge and I explained to them I've been calling my sister, he leaving voicemails on the phone, he threatening her. I asked them if there's anything that they can do. They told me to go to court with it. Unfortunately, she says the threats were not taken seriously by the authorities. When he was about to come out, he made the threats and he said that he wouldn't be in here forever. And when he come out, he come in for she. The day she got the phone call was last week, Thursday. Right, last week, Thursday. It's the day that she found out that he was also released. Mm -hmm. And I told her, are you sure you're okay? She said yes. Um, she didn't believe the person, when, because they already threatened her that he outside and she by the apartment. And it was a false alarm. So Thursday, she didn't really pay much attention. That she went home safe. Is the following day when he appeared on her job. Speaking to reporters outside of Forensic Sciences Center today, Kavita says her sister's killing come nine years after their mother was also murdered by someone she knew. On the international scene now, three people were killed in southwestern France on Friday. That's the day when a gunman held up a car, opened fire on police, and then took hostages in a supermarket screaming, Aha Akbar. Police later stormed the supermarket in the small town of Trebes, and Interior Minister Gerard Coulomb later disclosed that the attacker was killed. 
More in this report from television Reuters. At least one person is reported to have been killed in a hostage taking in southwestern France. At least eight people were initially said to have been held in a supermarket in the town of Trebes. The information coming from the local mayor speaking to French media. Police say the hostage taker earlier shot at four off duty police officers, wounding one of them. France's BFM TV says the person claimed allegiance to Islamic State. Counterterrorism officers have opened an investigation and the French interior minister has been sent to the region. France has witnessed a spate of deadly attacks over the past three years. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.